Hi guys, welcome! In this two-part video, we'll dive into the Trapper build for Rangers. Although not as popular as the ADL build, the Trapper build is also a good build for farming even at the early game. This is because of the low Zenny investment needed to attain one-hit kill with traps. Some archers start out with this build and just change to ADL build at the mid-stages of the game, when they have already saved enough Zenny. However, there are still a few who continue with the Trapper path. In the first part of this guide, we'll discuss how to distribute stat points, which skills and runes to prioritize, and what are the recommended equipment, cards, and pets for the Trapper build. For the second part of this guide, we'll discuss the best farming spots and tips, strategy to one-hit MVPs with traps, and some changes in Episode 6 that will affect Trapper Rangers. Hopefully by the end of this series, you'll get a clearer idea on how to use trap skills effectively. Alright, without further ado, let's begin! Let's first take a look at the trap skills. Rangers have 4 elemental traps that can deal damage to enemies. Frost Trap which deals water damage, Claymore Trap which deals fire damage, Land Mine which deals earth damage, and Electric Shock which deals wind damage. Both Frost Trap and Claymore Trap deal AoE damage, while Land Mine and Electric Shock deal damage to a single target only. As for the computation of trap skill damage, all traps use this base formula. As you can see, the 3 stats that increase trap damage are the total dex, int, and base level of your character. The only difference is the damage multiplier wherein Electric Shock has the highest, followed by Landmine, Flamer Trap, and Frost Trap having the lowest. The damage is then converted into magic damage but the reduction is based on the physical defense of the target and not magic defense. In addition, the breakthrough of Landmine skill includes attack and refine attack in the damage calculation. With this in mind, how can we improve the damage output of our trap skills? The answer is we need to invest heavily on gears that increase the following attributes. Dexterity, Intelligence, Magic Damage, Magic Penetration, and Ignore Death. Other stats like Magic Attack, Physical Damage, Range Damage, Physical Penetration, and Ignore M Death will not affect the damage of traps. Attack and Refine Attack also affect the breakthrough of Landmine Damage, but they only play a minimal role in increasing damage. Next, let's discuss the recommended stat distribution. Since the formula for trap damage computation only includes dex and int, we need to pump points on both attributes equally. If you have already maxed them out to 119, then just put the rest of the points on vitality for survivability. Next, let's talk about the skill point allocation. There are only few core skills that trappers need. If you have unspent skill points, you are free to allocate them in any skill of your choice. For the archer skills, you should prioritize getting level 10 Owl's Eye for more dex and level 10 Vulture's Eye to increase casting range of traps. For the hunter skills, get first level 5 Claimer Trap which deals AoE fire element damage to targets. This will be your primary farming skill when starting out as a hunter. After that, get level 5 Frost Trap which deals AoE water damage and has a chance to freeze and slow targets. There is actually a correction in the description of this skill as you can actually place 4 frost traps instead of 2 at max skill level. Then get level 3 detonator which increases damage dealt by traps. And level 10 improve concentration to boost dex. For the sniper skills you should prioritize getting level 5 landmine which deals earth element damage to a single target. This trap has higher damage multiplier than claymore trap so this can be your primary farming skill as a sniper. Then get level 10 trap research which increases in trap damage and the maximum number of traps that can be placed. Then get level 1 true sight which is an active skill that boosts all attributes by 5 points. You don't need to max this out as the SP cost increases per level but the additional stats are constant. And level 10 wind walk for faster movement speed. Once you have achieved job breakthrough, allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 10 Claimer Trap and Level 15 Landmine for greater damage multiplier for these two elemental traps. And then get Level 8 Detonator which also increases damage dealt by traps while at the same time increasing the area of explosion. Lastly for the Ranger 3rd job skills, you need to prioritize the following. Level 5 Electric Shock which deals wind damage to a single target. 
level 10 instrument expert for a higher trap damage and to reduce the SP cost of trap skills. Level 1 Warg Rider to be able to use buff and trap skills while mounted on your wolf. Level 10 Exceed Break which increases Dex and Int by 30. You don't need to max out the breakthrough of Exceed Break since there's no additional stats beyond level 10. And lastly, max out Electric Shock to level 15 and Warg Rider to level 3. Now let's go to runes. Another advantage of the Trapper farming build is that it is not dependent on runes. For Hunter to Sniper runes, you may just get 5 Dex runes and 1 Fire Damage rune. But once you've reached the Ranger 3rd job and activated Advanced runes, there are more runes that can boost the damage of trap skills such as Exceed Break Mastery runes for a higher Dex and Int when using the Exceed Break skill, Magic Damage Increase, Int and Int Refining runes, and additional Dex and Fire Damage runes. If farming with Electric Shock, you may also get the Electric Shock Enhanced runes for a higher damage multiplier. However, for the MVP build, you will need to activate the Detonator runes to one-hit kill boss monsters. Detonator 1 rune prevents monsters from triggering traps automatically. Meanwhile, Detonator 2 to 6 runes will increase the damage of traps when Detonator 1 is enabled. Now you may be wondering why we didn't include the other trap-related runes. This is because the effects of the other trap runes are only triggered when the targets are either sneered, afflicted with sleep, or damaged already with the other traps. Thus, these runes will not complement our goal of killing mobs with just one hit. In addition, trap research proficiency runes gives little amount of damage. Each rune only grants 3% of the bonus 200 damage of trap research at level 10 and not plus 30% damage. I think the cost of getting these runes is not corresponded to the benefit they give. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. For weapon, the best for beginners is the Luna Bow as it greatly helps in SP sustainability, especially when paired with the Luna Brooch. Upgrading it to higher tiers is advised since it increases dex and int and reduces SP cost of trap skills. Ideally, it should be upgraded to tier 10 and refined to plus 10 or plus 15 for a huge boost in trap skill damage. However, the bow that will give higher damage for the trapper build is the higher fine max tier Rudra bow. This because it gives a total of plus 10 int and each refinement level increases trap skill damage by 2%. This means that using a plus 10 tier 5 Rudra Bow deals an extra plus 20% damage. However, it doesn't have a synthesis yet in the current patch in the China server. An alternative to the Rudra Bow is the Moonlight Goddess, which is a synthesis of the Luna Bow. It grants plus 15 int, plus 5 dex, and plus 5% elemental damage and less 30% SP cost of trap skills. It also increases trap damage when you reach plus 5 plus 10, and plus 15 refinement. When coupled with the Luna Brooch, it gives plus 4 int and plus 20% SP region. Currently, I think the plus 15 Moonlight Goddess with Morale 4 enchantment is the best bow for the Trapper build as it will yield the greatest trap skill damage. However, the cost is much much more compared to a higher fine Ruder bow. As for the weapon cards, only racial cards and damage to boss cards increase the damage of traps. Example of racial cards and where to use them are shown in this table. For armor, the best in slot is a high refined max tier Stardust Rope with Morale Enchantment. This is because it gives a total of plus 10 int, plus 8 dex, and less 10% SP cost to trap skills. When coupled with a tier 6 Luna Brooch, its tier 4 effect will be enabled wherein trap damage is increased by 10%. However, this effect will not stack with 2 Luna Brooch. Ideally, it should be upgraded to plus 15 for additional plus 15% trap damage. As for armor cards, you may place a Moonex Star card for additional Ignore Death. Cheaper alternatives include the Evil Druid card and Sakura Pouring card. For the offhand, you may use a Clean Rasa bracelet for high death mobs and MVPs due to the plus 25% Ignore Death stat it gives. But for low death mobs, you may just use a tier 1 statue of Mother Mary for plus 4 dex and SP region, or a tier 3 Niles bracelet for plus 5 dex. For garment, equip an ancient cake with arcane enchantment for additional ignore death and magic damage. You may also use the light saint cake for additional dex and int. As for the garment slot, you may inlay a wild rose star card for more int, or toad card for more dex. 
For the foot gear, the best option is the crystal pumps with arcane enchantment. However, you'll be competing with a lot of warlocks and sorcerers with this one so you may opt to get any foot gear that has arcane for enchantment. As for beginners, you may just use the light saint shoes for additional dex and int or shoes to help in SP region. As for the foot gear cards, you can use either an Aegira card for extra int and SP region or a nine tail star card for more dex. For accessories, use a high refined max tier Luna brooch. Although the tier 6 set effect with the Stardust Rope does not stack, the tier 10 bonus can stack so you may equip two of these for higher trap damage. Other alternatives are the Flame Ring for extra int and fire damage when farming with Claim or Trap, Saint Necklace for additional int and dex, or a tier 6 Eye of the Lamb for plus 10 on int and dex. For accessory cards, you may inlay a Worm Tail card for additional int and dex, or racial damage modifiers such as the Scorpion card against Punk and Geographer, Caramel card against Dustiness and Ant Hell Ants, and the Ultraman card against Carrot, Harpy, Marmot, and Gibbet. For the headgears, these are the suggested items. For the head, you may use the Parcel Hat, Little Tree Hat, Fire Hat, Quaff, Majestic Goat, White Knight Helm, or the Doppelganger's Bandana. As for Gacha Headwear, you may use Norma the Unicorn, Ned Hogg's Poison Fang, Spring Fantasy Headwear, Star Musician Headwear, or the Dragon Waltz Series Headwear. For the Headwear cards, you may inlay any of the following. Isis Star Card, Andre Star Card, Ride Work Card, or Rocker Star Card. For the face, you may get a Dragon Scale Stripe, Cove Mask, Epic Spirit Lightning, or Nut on Head. As for gacha options, we have the Dancing Flame. For the mouth, you can use a blowgun or experiment mask. For the gacha option, we have the silver deer tail or night sakura infatuation. For the back item, you may use a devil wing, hydra, spring, or baby owl. As for the gacha options, you may use a plus 6 ultraman tika backpack, angel wing feather, deer bone, snow mirror, or frost mistletoe. And for the tail, you can get a porico picha or beast tail. As for the gacha options, use the Wind Purse Drake, Farda Ferrucci Tail, Roar Babe, and Fluffy Snow Cat. Lastly, let's take a look at the possible pets to accompany you in battle. There are tons of pets to choose from but here are some of my recommendations. When facing high def mobs and MVPs, pets that add ignore death are suitable such as the Desert Wolf Baby, Peko Peko, or Alice. Other pets that can increase trap skill damage are the limited edition Rudolph pet which gives plus 2% M-Pen, Harpy which is useful when using electric shock, or Goblin which is good when fighting against monsters of the demi-human race. However, if you can already achieve the one-hit kill even without a pet, it is good to have a pet that increases your SP region such as the Sohi, Marionette, or Pen Pen. Alright, so far we discussed the recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and pets for the Ranger Trapper build. Stay tuned for the second part of this guide wherein I'll discuss the best farming spots and tips, strategy to one-hit MVPs with traps, and some changes in episode 6 that will affect Trapper Rangers. I hope that with this guide, you'll be able to unleash the potential of the Ranger's trap skills. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.